I'm going to introduce the first speaker, and this is Saima Ahmed. Councillor Saima Ahmed is a passionate advocate of cultural activism, whose unwavering commitment to exploring identity and post-colonial thoughts uh, has made her a prominent figure in her community and beyond. We prof with a profound understanding of the significance of cultural heritage and its impact on society, she champions the importance of inclusive communities and empowers individuals to embrace their unique identities. Utilizing the power of performing arts and literature as transformative mediums, Councillor Ahmed has skillfully elevated the discourse around postcolonial perspectives, fostering meaningful dialogue and driving positive change. As theatre director and the artistic director for BSK UK, with over a decade of experience in British Bangladeshi cultural and creative sector, she masterfully narrates the captivating tale of her diaspora through various artistic and research endeavours, leaving a lasting impact on all who engage with her work. Today, we are pleased to have her as our first speaker, sharing her invaluable insights and enriching the cultural landscape with her passion and expertise. Thank you. Thank you, Clelia, for this wonderful introduction. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It is a bit daunting to be the first speaker um, and uh, to set the standard. So I'm going to try to set it in a moderate way because the person coming after me is someone who I look up to every day of my life. So um, when we talk about ourselves here, especially in the UK, as British Bangladeshis, we are often labeled with a lot of things. It's stories that we talk about, we hear about from our parents, families, our generations, our pre-generations that we often connect to. So this year's South Asian Heritage Month that wonderfully talks about stories to tell. So as the first speaker, although the title says the rise and fall of empires is not that heavy ended that like what I am going to talk about. I am going to talk about what the empires did to us, us being the Bangladeshis, the Bengalis. Now we come from a land which is the biggest delta on earth. It's, it's the delta that has been you know, uh, blessed with thousands and thousands of rivers, greeneries, and the, we are very much um, blessed to be so close to nature. And what it does to um, a group of people is that it creates resilience. It gives a lot of understanding of the local nature, keeps deeply rooted with the ground, and we call it mati all the time, that amadir mati, our land. So it, it is something, a feeling that is more tangible, and also a feeling that flows throughout if you look back the thousand years of the Bengali history. Now, I have been reading one of the books by Gulam Murshid. Dr. Gulam Murshid very strongly says that the, the history of Bengali culture is not more than thousand years old. Why he says that? He says that because if we want to find one single thing that binds the whole cultural arena or whole of us Bengalis together, that is the language. And if we look at the language, we will see that the language has been evolved, has been enriched by the colonial past. And by colonial past, I not only mean the latest um, colonial presence, which is the British, but also it goes back. It goes back to the Spanish Armada period, it goes back to the Portuguese period, it goes back even before when we had the Turks coming, we had the local kings ruling the land. So this language has taken on board a lot of other languages. If you look at it, you'll find Portuguese words, Spanish words, English words, Chinese words, Japanese words, Sanskrit. So Bengali as we say it, as a language, is not only something that we say we are unique, but we are like the salad bowl. There are fruits there, which is very distinct. You can pick them up separately, but together they make a beautiful thing. Going back to the empires, what he, it has created. Now, every colonial um, powers that comes in, we remember what 
you know, the, the philosophy of hegemony that comes through. It is expected when a power comes in, they also will bring in some control over the local population. It will talk about how it molds, breaks, or creates. But what happened, very interestingly, in our area, if we look back in a different mirror, and this is what I'm going to talk about, is that it brought in a beautiful uh, metamorphosis of our cultural identity. How so? So if we talk about, for example, if we talk about Portuguese colonials coming in, what they brought in was the print. And then we see that the focus being the Bengali culture reviving and going towards more print-based writing stuff, you know, publishing. And then we created another episode, a new episode. Then if I go back again and we, uh, we look at what we had before the local kings were ruling, we had a completely different system of the land. So the Bengali cultural identity and um, the examples that we look at is overcoming the hegemonial aspect. We resisted the hegemonial fact, but what we took in is the metamorphosis side of things. What is that? That is that we created, like Tagore said, you know, v it's one of my favorite theory of Tagore, that debe, nibe, milibe, milaibe. So what we are seeing now as a part of globalization that we take become one global hub and we create a culture, the Bengali culture has been doing that thousands of years ago. So, and then we created a distinct identity of the Bengali period. Now, the second thing I'm going to talk about is the post-colonial impact of it, which I term it as post-colonial hangover. Why do I say that? We say that because if we um, look at the very recent one, the British Empire, when the British Empire was coming and doing it, it again created a big shift in the societal aspect of things. We have seen with the British Empire, the creation of the middle class, the babus, the gentleman class, which was not there so ever prominent. And for me, it is very important because it again started to um, uh, rise, see the rise and resistance from people. I am building my case towards the final thing that I'm going to talk about is what happened after we all uh, um, you know, the, the colonial powers have come and goes. With the post-colonial ha hangover, and one, why I'm talking about the Babu society or the gentleman class is because the gentleman class actually shifted a lot because before what was a purely rural class or the elitist class, the division was always there. But what we have seen, a middle class who has been driving the intellectual and the cultural and literary sides of things. They were representing and being the representatives of both the East and the West. It was quite interesting to see how gradually it paved way for Bengali Renaissance. I think all of you here in this room should look up for Bengali Renaissance. We should speak like a day what happened during that time because that was the time when the likes of Tagore, when the likes of Ram Mohan Roy, with the, of, uh, l the likes of Bidda Shagor, Isho Chando Bidda Shagor, who actually created and brought in revolution through cultural and societal change. Because what it meant was a lot of the customs changed. The Shotida Pratha, which means the, uh, I think some, most of you would know about it, before there was in the society, especially in the Hindu uh, society, it was quite acceptable that uh, the wives would die uh, with their husbands. They will walk into the fire and die with them. And during this period, the reformation uh, came through Ram Mohan Roy and Bidda Shagur that it has to stop. So again, we went to transitions. And this all happened while we were under empires. So you can see our society as a whole, even though we had empires coming in and going, we always had our own things happening on the ground. And which is actually where I come from uh, to my final point, the power of resistance of the people and the resilience of the people. Bengalis are always known about their resistance and um, the power of resilience. What we did throughout history, if you look back from the Mughals to uh, the British empires, 
or before that, people would take in. They will welcome other powers in the land to some point. When it starts to brew and go really bad, there will be resistance. And the resistance came through cultural mobilization as well as societal and political. And it was really, really important to see how culture played a big role through and through. So when, for example, I can think of one of the examples is through the Bengali Renaissance, it was talking about building our own things, self-building, self-awareing aspects of things, but also talking about how we can resist. And it moved people. The mobilization of the public realm through inspirations, the likes of the, the literary and the political figures are equal. That's how I see where, with the rise and the fall of empires, how our own identity came into place. So I was studying, because I'm no academic to things like these, but when I was studying the psyche, the Bengali psyche of things, I found we have a shahodia theory. You know, the simplicity of things, how we simply got into stuff. The shahodia is something I think that as a Bengali, we are open to take things simply. We are not complicated. We don't like to complicate stuff. But when it comes to the question of identity, so for example, if it's there to divide and rule, if it's there to destroy something, so for example, our own craft, um, I can think of Muslin, you probably have heard how Muslin was a key element of pride and prosperity for the local, as a local trade. And co colonialism actually um, saw the destruction and destroy of this craft and we are reviving it again. I feel that these are all examples of how we have welcomed other nations in the land, but at the same time, when it's time to go, they had to go. Kilji came in his horse as the talk. He came with a force that was not only Turks. He came with Egyptians, Arabs, and everyone with him. Kilji was here only for two years. So my point is, if the first person who came in and tried to establish and couldn't stay for two years, it shows the colonial waves that's been coming and going has been a steady commonality in the region. But what destroyed a lot of things is that the people had gone to war, people had seen bloodshed. There was the, uh, the biggest death that toll that has uh, through the 76 um, monontor that we call, um, which saw man-made deaths and people were dying everywhere for pure greed. The division of the Bengals, the partition of the land, it had an impact locally. The final thing that I will talk about is the conclusion. Um, I think what I feel personally is, uh, going back to Tagore again, Tagore said that um, the, s the story of Bengal is that of separation and segmentation. Um, there is East Bengal, there is West Bengal, there's been Rar, there's been Barendra, but there has been classes like castes and all systems that's been, the society has been divided in a way. But one thing, the unification of this um, population, the ethnic community, is the language that binded them together. So if we look at a religious divide, it has always been divided. If we look at the class caste system, it has always been divided. But again, the language and cultural side of things, it is as steady as a river. It has always been flowing. So for me, the rise and fall of empire is that of the story of the South Asian community that stays as a constant, is the cultural identity of things. We never forget. We are never um, here. Even after me, I think if we come to um, the post-colonial side of things, um, even the Pakistani period, culture was the one thing that um, we held on to and we moved forward. So as a British Bangladeshi here today, what does this mean, this context mean? 
I have gone like an ebb and flow, coming and going, um, just like Prufok, uh, the the you know the the dilemma of a modern man. Uh, I would say in that case, a modern woman, um, a postmodern woman, is that it comes to us as fragments, as bits, and we have to hold on to this because we were not all. Everyone was born in Bangladesh, and we have heard our stories in fragments. Hence, this is a fragmentation of thoughts, but it keeps us together. It was wonderful to have you today here and listening to my, I would say, what should I say, the, the, the beginning of things, but thank you. Thank you very much.